Hello friends, welcome to CodeChef. This is Suraj and in this video, let's discuss this problem end sorted from starters 47. Now let's understand the problem statement. So here in this problem, chef considered a permutation P, which is of numbers starting from 1 till N and it, uh, chef call this permutation end sorted if and only if the first element in this sequence is 1 and the last element in this sequence is N. So first should be 1 and the last should be N and in between the numbers can be in any order so if this is the condition then chef will call this permutation end sorted okay so in here uh, chef is given a permutation p so we'll be given this p here okay and in one operation chef can choose any index i and swap p i with p i plus one so in short chef can choose any two adjacent uh, numbers and chef can swap that number okay so here we need to determine the minimum number of operations required by chef to make the permutation P end sorted. So for any given P, we need to determine minimum number of swaps required to convert that P into end sorted. Okay. So here P is said to be permutation of number 1 to N if, if P contains each and here it is written that P contains each and every element starting from 1 till N exactly once. Okay. So now let's see the input and output structure. So in the input, first of all, we'll get total number of test cases. That is T is equals to uh, 4 is here. So in total, there are 4 test cases. So this is first. Then here, this is second test case. This is third and this is fourth test case. Then for each and every test case, we'll get two lines. In the first line, we'll get the value of N. That is the size of this sequence. Okay. And then on the next line of each and every test case, we'll get the numbers in this sequence. So here N is 4. So we'll get four numbers and the permutation P here is for the first test case, P is 1, 3, 2 and 4. And here again for the second test case, P is 3, 2 and 1. And for the third test case, N is equals to 2. So there are total two numbers in the sequence. So for the third test case, P is 2 and 1. And again for the fourth test case, P is 2, 1 and 3 and in the output we just need to print the minimum number of operations required to convert this P into end sorted. So now let's see the test cases. So here in this first test case 1 is at the first position and 4 is at the last position here N is 4. So this sequence is already end sorted. So here we do not need any further operation. So the number of uh, minimum number of operations required in this first test case is 0 so we output 0 now let's see the second test case here 1 is at the last position and 3 is here so first we can swap this two number so 1 will come here so it will become 1 and then it will become 2 then we can swap these two numbers so it will become 1 and it will become 3 and then we can swap these two numbers so it will become 3 and it will become 2 so finally our sequence will become 1, 2 and 3. Okay. So here first this one is here that is on the first position and value of n that is 3 is on the last position. So now this sequence p becomes end sorted and in total here this is the first swap then second swap and here this was the third swap. So in total we need 3 swaps to convert this sequence p into end sorted. So the output is 3. Now let's see the third test case. Here 1 is at the end and 2 is at the start position and the value of n is 2 again. So we can just swap these two numbers so it will become 1 and 2. So now 1 comes at the first position and n that is 2 comes at the last position. So just in one swap we can easily convert this sequence p into end sorted. So minimum number of operations required in third test case is 1. And now let's see here in the fourth test case. Here 3 is already in the end position so we do not need to change anything here but this one is not at the first position so we can swap this two number so in one swap this one will become here and this two will come here so now the sequence is end sorted because one here is at the first position and n is at the last position so now this sequence becomes end sorted and hence there is only one swap needed because in one swap only we are able to convert the sequence into end sorted so output for the fourth test case is also 1. Now let's discuss the approach. So first of all let's see how many swaps will be needed 
to move this x to the front and end position okay so first of all let's see how many swaps will be needed to move this x to end position so what we can do here is we can swap this to so this x will come here it will become like this d then x and then we can swap these two position so this e will become e will come here and this x will move one step right so it will become d e then x and then again we can swap so it will become d e f and x and once more if we swap it will become d e f g and x so in total there are four swaps needed to move this x to end position so this number of swaps here is equal to number of elements on the right okay so observation is number of swaps is same as number of elements now let's test this observation on the left hand side also okay so here we need to bring this x in the first position and we can see that there are three elements so we first of all let's predict that we'll need in total three swaps so now let's see okay so in first swap uh, this c will come here and this x will move here then in the next swap this x will come here and b will come here at this position and then in uh, next swap this a will come here and x will move to this position so in total we need three swaps that is again same as number of elements on the left so number of swaps is equal to number of elements on the left or on the right okay now here is two cases okay in the first case one will be on the left hand side of n okay so in this case the total number of swaps that uh, that is the minimum number of swaps needed will be number of elements on this side that is a and the number of elements on this side that is b so simply it will be equals to a plus b okay and here now let's see what will happen here so let's say number of elements uh, to the left of one uh, that is on this side is a and the number of elements to the right of n that is on this side is b because n will move towards right and one will move towards left so we can guess that our answer we should again be equal to a plus b but here is one simple catch which we need to see okay so the catch is that while moving towards right okay while n is moving towards right or while one is moving towards left we'll get a situation where we'll find n and one adjacent to each other so at this position if we do a swap so in a single swap this n goes one position right and this one goes one position left so in a single swap we are able to move both of the element towards its destination so here because of this we need one swap less than the above case so these are the, this, this is the only two cases which is possible here so if uh, one is in the left hand side of n then we'll just print uh, a plus b that is number of element in the left plus number of element in the right and if one is on the right hand side of n then we'll print a plus b that is number of elements on left plus number of elements on right so uh, and we'll subtract it by one considering that there will be one case where in a single swap both of this element will move towards its destination now here first of all we need to check how to find if one is on the left of n or not so we will be given this uh, array p so what we can do is we can iterate through it and we can store the index of index of 1 and index of n so let's call it i1 and let's call it i n so if if i1 is less than i n it means 1 is on the left of n okay otherwise one is on the right of n so if i n uh, if i1 is less than i n then we can say answer is simply a plus b else answer is a plus b minus 1 and now let's see how we can find the value of a plus b so we know the index of i1 so it's uh, index in this array starts like this 0 1 2 3 and so on and somewhere we'll get i1 
okay so this is the current index and this is the target index which we need to travel along okay so let's say if we are on the second index that is i1 is equals to 2 then we need to uh, pass two values okay to reach the first position so indirectly the numbers on the left here okay numbers on left of 1 numbers on left of 1 that is a the value of a is simply equal to the index at which currently 1 is present that is a is simply equals to i1 and similarly numbers on right of n will be simply that is b will be simply equal to index of last position okay that is n minus 1 index of this last position n minus 1 subtracted by the current index uh, at where the n is present so that is index of n so b is equals to this n minus 1 subtracted by i n okay so a plus b from here we get is equals to index of 1 plus n minus 1 minus index of n so this is the value of a plus b so if i n is less than n then we will just output a plus b that is this value otherwise we will output a plus b minus 1 that is this value subtracted by 1 i hope you understood logic to this problem but still if you have any doubt now you can use this uh, new feature in codechef that is codechef's doubt support so let me just show you how you can use this new feature so let's say you go to this practice section and uh, let's say i pick any problem so let's let me pick this uh, age limit problem then here in this problem let's say i'm stuck and i'm unable to understand this problem or you may uh, get any confusion so what you can do here is you can go to this ask a doubt section and here you can chat with our experts so let me start this new chat and here i'll ask a simple question so let me ask So here you can see that uh, my doubt is answered and similarly you can also ask your doubts in the doubt support and get the answers quickly. So this doubt support will be available 24 by 7. So you can ask any doubt re uh, regarding this problem and the experts will be there to answer your questions. Here is the solution in C++. So first of all, I'm accepting T, the value of uh, total test cases. And then I'm calling solution function for each and every test case. And here in the solution function, I'm accepting the value of N. Then here, uh, I'm iterating fr from I equal to 0 till I less than N. And one by one, here I'm accepting the ith uh, value, ith integer in the sequence P. And I'm checking if that number is equals to 1. Then here, I'll save the index of uh, 1 that is equals to I. And if the number is equals to n, then I'll save the index of n that is equals to i. Okay. So finally, then here I'll calculate uh, uh, the sum of a plus b that is simply equals to index of 1 plus n minus 1 uh, subtracted by index of n. And here I'll check if 1 is present on the left hand side, then simply I'll print the a b that is sum of a plus b. And if 1 is not present on the left hand side, then I'll have to subtract 1 considering that uh, case where. Uh, one will be where uh, n will be and one and n will be on the adjacent of each other so in one case that is in one swap both will move towards its destination so considering that case i'll subtract one here here is the similar implementation in python so first of all i'm accepting t the total number of test cases then i'm calling solution function for each and every test case here in the solution function i'm accepting the value of n then here i'm accepting the sequence p and here i've initialized the index of one and n to zero and then here in the for loop, I'll check uh, for the index of 1. If the current, uh, I'll trade from i is uh, 0 till n. 
and if the current number is equals to one it means i got one so i'll save the i uh, value in the index one that will be the index of one similarly if i find n that means i'll save that particular value of i in index n so i got index of one and index of n so from here i'll calculate the value of a plus b that will be simply equal to index of one plus n minus one minus of index of n okay then here i'll check if one is present on the left hand side then i'll simply print a plus b or else i'll print a plus b minus one so i hope you understood the logic and its implementation in both c plus plus and python in case you have any doubt feel free to write in the comments so let's meet in another video thank you so much